become clear to me that uh, this prolonged leadership turmoil uh, would do uh, irreparable harm to the institution. Uh, so this morning, I informed my colleagues that uh, resigned from the speakership and resigned from Congress at the end of October. All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now to weigh in on this uh, startling event is uh, Congressman Blake Farenthold, of course, from the great state of Texas and a member of the House Oversight Committee and Government Reform and Tea Party Caucus. Hello, uh, Congressman. Good to have you back, sir. Oh, good to be with you all again. All right. Well, the, your reaction? I think uh, the speaker heard the same thing that uh, I heard when I was back in Texas over August, that the grassroots folks were uh, not too happy with his performance uh, as speaker and were looking for a change. And are, are you surprised that it, uh, it came now? And, you know, we, we had uh, uh, Tim Yule's camp at the beginning of the show, and he said that the speaker realized he didn't have the votes to remain speaker. Uh, I'm... I think this is perfect timing for Boehner. He comes off the visit uh, of the Pope, which I think is the highlight of his congressional career, something he'd been working on for 20 years. And I, I think he realized that he had nowhere to, uh, you know, there, there's no further way up right now. This was his, uh, this really was the high point of uh, his speakership, and he quit while he was on top. Yeah, going out on a high note, so to speak, right? Yep. <laughs> All right, so, so where do we go uh, from here, as far as uh, the a new leader, the, the, now I don't I don't know how how, Pete, how uh, Kevin McCarthy reacts to this, but Boehner said that he would make a great speaker. Are you uh, willing to uh, to concede that to Kevin McCarthy at this point? I think he uh, is the natural front runner uh, to move up, but I'm not uh, sure if his step forward doesn't get perceived by the Tea Party folks or uh, others back home who were the thorn in Boehner's side, as being Boehner 2.0. But, you know, you've heard a couple of names bandied around, but my phone has uh, not rung with anybody uh, who's looking at challenging Kevin. I, I suspect we'll have somebody. Right. Well, uh, w would you be interested in it, sir? I talked about that with my wife, and she threatened divorce. <laughs> All right, well, who... I mean, who would you like to see possibly at least challenge? And you could, you know, give me a name or two. It doesn't have to be one person. It could be as many as you want. Well, what I'm seeing on social media is a huge outcry for Trey Gowdy to run. But I don't think Trey uh, is interested. Jeb Henserling from Texas kicked around uh, running uh, for some leadership positions last time around. But uh, I don't think Jeb is interested in uh, this point and you know Paul Ryan's name has been uh, bandied around uh, you know, it, it it is a thankless job where you're on the road almost 365 uh, days a year fundraising or uh, working up here in Washington uh, you know, I, it is hard to pick somebody until you find I wouldn't want to curse anybody with the job right, who right, didn't right. want it <laughs> all right now Nancy Pelosi uh, the former speaker of course uh, said that Not this, her. No, no, no. Said <laughs> okay. that this shows the disarray of the Republican Party and their war against women and, and basically the same sentiments echoed by the former majority leader of the Senate, Harry Reid. Um, what is this, exploitation, uh, fiction? What is it? I think they're trying to uh, use this uh, as another opportunity to get in front of their camera and, and promote the liberal agenda. You, you can basically ask them any question you want, and they'll pivot to uh, something like disarray in the Republican Party or war on women. I mean, <laughs> you could ask them what color shoes they're wearing, and <laughs> they'd answer with the war on women. Yeah, it's kind of a, a generic. Uh, let me ask you very quickly, uh, what were your impressions of uh, the Pope's address yesterday? Very, uh, very inspiring. I think uh, if you look at his, you know, he could have come out a, a whole lot more on the attack on some liberal issues, but he definitely, I think he left no doubt that he had a, uh, wanted to see us do something about life at all its stages. Uh, you know, everything else, you know, obviously we all want a, a better climate, how we go about getting it. Again, the devil is in the details on some of the right. broad general things that most of us agree on. I suspect the Democrats think that uh, their path is more in line with what the Pope wants. Well, uh, I, I think we're, we're after the same thing uh, on most counts that the Pope wants. You know, better life for everyone, justice for all, more freedom. I mean, Just those are good, generic, yeah. all-American messages. Congressman, great to talk to you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thanks. All right, folks. So we're coming back. We're going to switch gears. And uh, Tim 
Uh, 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 we're gonna, we're gonna uh, okay, we gotta do that again. <laughs> 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 this 